Why does the upper airway collapse? The airflow reaching the lungs in order to maintain an ideal oxygen availability in our body, as well as a good oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange, has to travel through the upper airway from the entrance of the nose, the nostrils, down to the oropharynx, before entering into the laryngopharynx and the trachea, before finally reaching the bronchioles. After entering through the nostrils, the air has to hit various structures inside the nose, such as the conchi or turbinate, and the lateral walls of the nose, as well as entering into the maxillary sinus, where nitric oxide is produced. These steps are key factors to warm and purify the air before reaching the lungs. The mucus and the cilia, or small hairs, in the nose help to moisturize and further clean the air. When the airflow goes from the nasal cavity into the nasopharynx, passing through the coeni or posterior nostrils, there is a reduction in the radius of the air passage, which increases the speed of the airflow. A higher speed of airflow reduces the pressure on the walls of the naso and oropharynx, which may increase the possibility of a collapse of the upper airway at any of the pharyngeal areas. This means the smaller the volume of the airway, the faster the airflow can travel through the upper airway, and thus the less pressure exerted on its lateral walls. Therefore, the smaller the volume of the upper airway means a higher risk of collapsing, particularly at the pharyngeal areas, which are mostly composed of smooth muscle. The reduction on the volume of the upper airway and its negative effect on the airflow stimulates an increase in the frequency of breathing. In other words, more breaths per minute, known as hyperventilation. Faster breathing is commonly associated with mouth breathing. Both of them are also associated with crooked teeth, poor growth, restless sleep, behavioral disorders, and anxiety, among other chronic problems.